What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Game Show Global Esports Cup. This is the European Playoffs Best of Five. Winner of this series between No Logic Gaming and Stark goes to the show, goes to the land finals in Vilnius at the end of the month. As I'm sure you were paying attention to in that uh, in the introduction video, I'm Mike Loris, going to be your only caster for today. And in game one, No Logic Gaming absolutely raffle stomped Stark. It was kind of a surprising one, simply because their draft wasn't necessarily a sheer aggressive draft, but they played as if it was, and it worked out really really well. Just got in under the Stark side, and well, Stark didn't see that one coming. So hopefully for Stark, they at least win a game, and uh, we'll bring it back to a best of three, and make this whole series a little more interesting. The Logic Gaming definitely flexing their muscles over in that last game, and... Well, they have a pretty decent start in this second game as well. Taking a quick look at the bans. Looks like Tusk is going to be banned out uh, a little bit earlier, taking the place of Darkseer of last game. Aside from that, the bans are more or less par for the course. Slaughter still in the pool. Is a pretty good partner to have with the Dazzle. If Stark want to grab that one, it is uh, kind of bold from them, considering how much Trixie got stopped in that last game. Couldn't stay in his lane, first of all, so he was forced to roam. And a slaughter that can't lane, can't jungle or anything like that. So your backup plans as a slaughter are really, really limited. It's instead going to be an Ember Spirit pickup for the Stark side. That is going to leave Slaughter in the pool, and if if it's still in the pool by the time it gets Five around to NLG's remaining. pick, pretty sure they're going to hesitate not at all to grab that into the safe lane with the Dark Sir Queen of Pain, then play time. similarly aggressive. That's definitely possible. Uh, at, at the very least, I would expect uh, NLG to pro probably ban it themselves. Went to Wyvern with the Darkster combo, going to be banned out, and there we go, Slark out, uh, Slaughter out as well. All these fish look the same. Am I racist? I probably am. But Ember Spirit is going to need a little bit more CC from the NLG side, uh, most likely coming out from the supports, because we got the mid lane situation set up here for NLG. Excalibur most likely going to take that Quap, Darkseer, for the off lane. And, uh, well, the likes of Undying, Spirit Breaker, Night Stalker, they're all still in the pool and will not be taken out by Stark, instead getting Radiant rid of the Bounty Hunter, and, which is kind of strange to see. Radiant team pick. But for sure, if NLG want to go for a super aggressive lane and really keep the pressure on the Stark side, uh, going for the Undying here probably is uh, warranted, or Spirit Breaker. Alternatively, just gonna, gonna grab their safe lane here, keep their options a little bit open. Keep Stark, uh, well, I guess Stark now do know the lane assignment. Amber Spirits probably going to feel okay going up against the Queen of Pain, especially if he has a little bit of help from someone. The Gyrocopter has the pick for the NLG side. Well, probably be like the, again, is the most safe, self-sufficient here that you could probably find that safe lane. Aside from that, Stark don't know their offlane selection just yet. Clockwork seems like it's probably going to be the safest. But then for NLG, they could just easily like grab a Bane, put him in a support role this time, and then just set up very well on that, uh, on that Clockwork, get around those cogs that way. Reserved NLG, time. just their three uh, three cores. Probably three of the uh, S plus tier cores for their respective lanes. Like Queen of Pain matchups are usually across the board pretty darn good. Though Wind Ranger is still in the pool, so is TA if Stark want to grab those. You know, Wind Ranger probably slightly better in this game. You know, Darkseer is a powerhouse in the off lane, right up there with Doom as probably uh, one and two respectively. And Gyrocopter is the beast in the safe lane, definitely the strongest hero that you can have there as far as uh, defensive and offensive purposes are concerned. Just with sheer brute force strength, no synergies involved. As the no-logic gaming side, do have an okay amount of synergy with the Darkseer setting up for the Queen of Pain Gyrocopter. No real lockdown just yet. And in that regard, Disruptor is looking really good as no-logic gaming's fourth pick. Vacuum back into Static Storm, and you're going to be getting some kills, guys. Especially when you have a Sonic Wave and Call on top. Oh baby, that hurts. Stark do have to kind of prepare for that. They do have a Dazzle, so as long as the Dazzle isn't pulled into that Static Storm, yeah, he'll be fine to grave out and hopefully buy Ember Spirit and escape out of that. Of course, it is far from guaranteed. Earth Shaker. It's going to be an Earth Shaker. Looking to jam up that combo. Team I was going to say, I wouldn't even mind seeing a Silencer from Stark. It is definitely not too late. Silencer versus Quap is the worst lane in the world for the Silencer. Spirit breaker. But we are going to be breaking Dyer some spirits here, breaker. guys. It's going to be the cow, most likely. It's going to be uh, pseudo-nomadic. Also going to half play with that Darkseer in the lane. It's something we've seen, uh, well, pretty much every team do at least at some point in time. Uh, NLG, they don't really they don't really lean on it that heavily. Occasionally they'll run it, but other than that, you know, sometimes. For the most part, it's a dangerous lane. It's a pressure lane. It's a lane that you expend two heroes 
in that lane. You that's like that's the cost. What you get is effectively three heroes out of the game. At least that's how it's supposed to work in theory. So you you know get a little more space from your other heroes. You get a couple of kills. You don't even need to necessarily get the kills. Uh, I mean, you don't necessarily need to get the kills as long as you keep the enemies off the lane. And if you make trades, even kind of even-ish trades, then that's fine for that dual lane. Because again, you're you're handling a dual lane versus a tri lane most of the time. Shaker and Dazzle, not really heroes that can fight back. There are heroes that can disengage from it for sure. Like if you charge in and the enemy gets graved, not much you can do about that for the LG's side. Ten seconds. Unless suddenly acts out of nowhere. No, probably not. But yeah, Earthshaker, also a great disengager. Necrophos is the pick here from Stark. Definitely an interesting way to go. So I'm thinking that this Necrophos might be going towards a safe lane. And he might have a rough time here. I, I like the Shaker a little bit more in that uh, in that support capacity. Just trying to disengage. Get the Dazzle and the Necrophos. There's a lot of heal Ten here from the Stark really side. Mean. NLG can grab an Ancient Apparition. The synergies won't really Five be that high. Remain. Again, Disruptor looking much, much better than, uh, than an AA. Even with the Death Pulse and the Shadow Wave from the Dazzle. But yeah, it seems like NLG would like the uh, Earthshaker in the support role as well. Going to be banning out Trixie's hero in the Clockwork. This is going to be a tricky laning phase for the Stark side. Necrophos, Ember Spirit. Mid game is really when they hit their stride. And in order to get to the mid game, you have to make sure you don't get absolutely shit stomped in the early game. And that is definitely a dangerous situation to be in up against Spirit Breaker Darks here, dual lane. Or just, you know, Spirit Breaker roaming around towards a Queen of Pain's lane or a Gyrocopter's lane. Any of which can you, you can instantly get kills off of. Silencer. Silencer for NLG now. Very Dire interesting way to go. Pick. Hmm. I Okay, I think this is not really going to be that pressure hero. I don't expect it to be. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be the fact that they have a Gyrocopter already in the lane up against any given hero from Stark. will already have a pretty decent matchup. So add a Silencer as like a pseudo jungler in that, you know, pulling stacking role. And you can just get a free time in the background of Silencer. At least that's what I'm thinking. NLG kind of surprised me with the last draft's Ten execution. So they can pull something out of left field here. I'm not really sure what that would Five involve, however. Uh, silencer up against the Stark side. Just the global silence to lock down the Necrophos, Ember Spirit, and Dazzle. Five and the amount of bursts you can remaining. apply during the global silence is usually going to be the testing point as to whether or not it's a, su it's a successful GS. Venomancer is the pick here for Stark. Very interesting draft from the Stark side. I feel like their early game is not quite up to snuff. They're, they will struggle a lot to deal with the Spirit Breaker. The only great tools they have at dealing with it, uh, the Earth Taker's Fissure mostly. Although Ember Spirit definitely can uh, chain the chain the Spirit Breaker out of his charge. It's very difficult. And we'll see. We'll see if Stark are able to get off the ground and get into the mid to late game. Because if they do get there, then they'll actually at least have some opportunities to get some Scythe kills. Get a little bit of damage from their Ember Spirit flowing. And, you know, Ember Spirit... With Venomancer, you can take a very, very slow poking fight as long as you suicide bomb your Venomancer in. Then you just spam out the slights, get the damage over time from the Hot Stopper Aura, you know, kind of damage over time esque spell with the Death Pulse. You know, it's slow. It's nuking damage over time, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Then Star can really take a good win. It's up to the NLG to apply enough pressure. It seems like they definitely have the correct heroes to do so. Let's see who's going to be playing what. Madra is going to be playing the Gyrocopter this time. Milan is on the silencer. They're going to wrap around on the Venomancer right now. Ooh, not a good place for Venomancer to be because this is going to hurt. Rocket Barrage full on. Milan is going to lay down the last warrior. Now here comes the cow from the left side. Trixie is going to die here. Silencer is going to grab some int plus first blood. And they have a read on where the ward is because there's no other reason for a Venomancer to be in this area if he wasn't blocking this camp. I'm sure they're going to get rid of it soon enough. Or at least Milan, don't mess this one up, bro. I believe in your ability to deward this. There we go. He's going to get 50 gold and a first blood. Oh, yeah. Not a good start for this Stark's bottom lane. And Trixie had a really rough time last game. And hopefully for him, he can get something together now. But uh, awful Venomancer up against this duo. Not fun times. Excalibur is going to be playing the Queen of Pain for the NLG side. We got Mitch on the Darkseer. And, of course, uh, it is going to be Spartan on the Spirit Breaker already helping himself with that first blood. Nemphi is going to be handling the Ember Spirit on the Stark side. Got OKC on the Dazzle. The classic get first blood into good luck. Uh, Boogie's on the Necrophos up towards top lane. We got Valix on the Earth Taker bottom. And that he's going to be helping out Trixie at least for a little bit. This is uh, already going to be a rough, rough start. I'm curious to see where Milan is actually going to end up sticking. Again, I expected this Silencer to be uh, pretty much full-on jungling, and Spirit Breaker doing stuff like this, actually threatening the kills. Milan, though, is just going to start trading hits with Nemphi. Poor man's shield is going to mean that Nemphi is going to be able to win these trades outside of the nuke and disarm. 
Feels bad, man. Velix is going to come in, has a fissure. Milan? Oh, I don't think he can get walled off. Well, he's going to get walled off, except in a good way. So he's happy with that. And Velix, unfortunately, is going to have to fall back. Let's take these lanes from top to bottom. Mitch is going up against a lane with very little kill potential. Even with Earthshaker here, there's not much that they can do to kill off this Darkseer until they get level 6 on the Scythe. Now, once Scythe comes up, it's possible, but oh, Valix getting into a man fight with Milan. Excalibur going to blame forward. Doesn't have another Shadow Strike, but Valix now with the last word on him is going to die. And at that, lose a little bit of extra intelligence. A very easy kill for the NLG side as Valix kind of offers himself up to the NLG squad. And that's not a good start again for this dark side. But yeah, the top lane Mitch is going to be doing just fine. He cannot really pressure the Necrophos fully. Necrophos is very capable at dealing with Ion Shells, mostly because of Sadist. Milan's actually going to stick with Excalibur almost in a full dual lane capacity. Not going to blink forward for that curry. We have a charge coming in from bottom. Nemfi is not going to see this one coming directly. Last word is there. And he has to slide a fist to dodge his charge. If he doesn't, he will just die. There it is. Slide a fist is not going to be used now that he's silenced. Spirit Breaker now to grab that kill. Milan is going to take a couple tower shots on the way out. But now the silencer has been involved in three kills. And close enough so that he's going to grab the intelligence. Grabbing the intelligence out of the Ember Spirit, not as big as some of the other heroes. Definitely the Earthshaker. He needs every single scrap of int that he can get. His int growth isn't really that high, and he is already a hero that is strapped for mana. Same exact thing here for the Venomancer. Uh, you don't really need a ton of mana to like spam out Plague Wards or anything like that. What you do need is a lot of mana for the Poison Nova, Gale, and Plague Wards afterwards. So losing intelligence in your Venomancer also isn't really the uh, brightest bulb. It's going to be a little bit of a rough time. If Silencer is able to keep getting these kills, especially on these heroes, then for Stark, they may just run out of mana to perform their combos as necessary. The Necrophos, yeah, he is getting a lot of free farm up in that top lane. Again, there's not much that Mitch can do to stop this. But Mitch is not being stopped either. Up against Dazzle and Necrophos, there is pretty much zero kill potential until they get Scythe. And even then, it involves Mitch making a very big mistake. Even with an Earthshaker there, honestly, there's not much the Darkseer has to fear. So top lane, Darkseer's going to be just fine. Bottom lane, the Venomancer has already died once, although is being uh, not really pressured that much going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Gyrocopter. The kill power in this lane is also nil until Gyrocopter gets level 6, in which case he needs to, you know, kind of like hide here and then call down here and then walk in Rocket Barrage to get the kill. Beautiful drawing, I know. That's the only way that Gyrocopter, at least by himself, is going to get those kills. But you would expect Spartan to be helping out for the most part, and Spartan is going to not really go in super deep. Oh, Courier... Not going to get picked off by Excalibur now. Valix right on the corner. They have chains. They have a Fissure. And Excalibur taking full creep wave damage as well. Going in deep for a Courier, which didn't even take a single right click. So I'm not really sure if that was worth it for the co-op. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, though. Queen of Pain, uh, yeah, she really can't afford to just die like that. Up towards top lane, Boogie. Here's the combo that I was talking about earlier. They have Ion Shell ticking away. Now, Boogie is going to get a couple death pulses, but gets bashed up. They need a couple more bashes if they're going to get any kills. But now the pressure is going to start to mount up towards this Necrophos. Whereas Darkseer can only passively pressure the Necrophos, Spartan Spearbreaker can actively pressure the Necrophos. Actually, you know, force the Dazzle to use a couple Graves, a couple Heals, and it'll maybe panic a little bit. And again, it's not really going to be hurting their power in of these lanes. And Spartan, for the most part, hasn't really been in a lane. He's been poking in the mid, poking in... He poked in bottom once, but that's about it. And we'll see if uh, they're actually able to get this kill on this top lane. Very durable heroes up towards top lane for Stark. At least, uh, unless you're going to burst them down. But you, know, you usually need like a burst of a Skyrath Mage or a Lina to effectively kill off these heroes. They just have so much heal over time. Mostly with the Sadist, really. Although, he's going to get back up towards the top. Boogie, you know, return fire onto Spartan. There's still no Scythe here. Spartan's free to make those trades. He's going to salve up Boogie, though. I mean, he takes a little bit of damage, yeah. With level 2 Sadist and 5 Stick Charges. Like, look at this regen. He's just getting so much health back. It's going to cost NLG a lot more. And it's going to benefit them if they keep on going for those aggressive plays. You do have to be careful about how much mana they expend up on the top lane. Other than that, Spirit Breaker isn't really going to do a whole lot. Really, the easiest kill for him is to go for Trixie. Although, for right now, he would love to go for the Ember Spirit if he can. Uh, level 6 makes it damn near impossible for a Spirit Breaker to gank that Ember. But yeah, bottom lane is definitely the best opportunity for a Spirit Breaker, if you can find the proper angle. We can see that angle needs this element of surprise, and that's a surprise that the Venomancer is kind of prepared for. It's got Plague Wards all up in that lane. He's going to try to go for it anyway. One Plague Ward has timed out, the second one should see this one coming. 
And Trixie is actually in a really bad spot right now because the call down is almost guaranteed to land. Charge is coming and it's going to connect onto Trixie. No ultimate on this Venomancer. Rocket Barrage call down. Going to get Spirit Breaker. Very easy kill. Milan, unfortunately, a little too far away to grab Intelligence. But it's fine. It's still a kill on this bottom lane. And I love how as soon as I say the easiest place for them to get kills is this bottom lane. They're like, hey, wait. Yeah, that, that's right, isn't it? We can just go ahead and kill this bottom lane. And boy, do they. That's a dead Venomancer. Yeah, and I would expect Spartan to really stay in this bottom lane as much as possible. Help out with the pulls and the stacks. Help keep control for this uh, for this gyrocopter in the lane. The beauty is that call down is such a low cooldown that they can just keep re repeating those kills endlessly. And unless the uh, Venomancer is in a much better position next time, he will just die every single time. It's not that hard for him to be in a better position. Oh, Milan and Valix. Two men enter. Two men leave. Okay, that was kind of disappointing. <laughs> would have thought that the silence would have at least threw a glaive at him. Because that's what you gotta do, man. Nemphi, though, has level 6. Has no more spirits. He does have one to jump to, but he does have to be careful. Uh, Ember Spirit just very resistant here to silencer until global silence is up. Stark, they're getting a little bit of farm on this Necrophos. A little bit of farm on the Ember. They're not more farm than the NLG side, but uh, NLG at least aren't going to be applying any sort of lethal pressure like... Like this on the last game, where we had the Tiny just get all these solo kills so very easily at that. I mean, not solo kills, but uh, dual kills with Spartan. Excalibur's going to be playing a little bit of a slower game. Again, not by much, but uh, enough to make uh, let's make it so that Stark actually get a little bit of free time to actually play a real game of Dota. Since last game, it just seemed like they never really got off the ground. And it was like NLG playing Dota and Stark just not having fun, just getting beaten up. Fat kid on the playground. Definitely going to be a slower start. Again, for Stark, it's not really going to be any substantial timing where they uh, suddenly kick into gear. Now, of course, getting more items in the Ember Spirit is always very nice. Scythe on the Necrophos is a big one. Oh, don't die here. Okay, he'll kill off the trolls instead. Nemphi will be fine. Uh, but yeah, Necrophos' Scythe is a really big opportunity for him to get some kills. Is instead going to go for Sadist. Gotta say, I don't mind this at all. I think this is actually the correct decision here. And you know that you're going to be facing up against a lot of Ion Shells. So first of all, that Sadist is going to, for the most part, mitigate that. And killing off Mitch is damn near impossible because this Dark Seer is just going to surge away. And Scythe is the tool that actually lets you get kills, but you actually have to set up for the Scythe down the line. So this is the correct build from Boogie, but uh, no Scythe right now means that his kill power, Stark's kill power in general, can be drastically decreased. Again, this is a mid to late game draft for Stark. They just want to be not losing the early game stage. And right now they're not doing fantastically, but hey, they're not uh, actively bleeding out heroes or anything like that. So things can, of course, be going a lot, lot worse. Especially for this Venomancer, who, though died twice, now with the level 3 Plague Ward, is going to be slowly shoving in this wave. MP is going to come in, jump forward onto Madra right now. Call down, not going to happen. He's going to get blown up first. Now Milan's going to chase down by the Ember Spirit. A couple sword swipes, and Nemphi's going to draw a very easy double kill in this bottom lane. And the NLG side just didn't expect the Ember Spirit to be there. They had an Observer Ward in mid. They saw Valix, but uh, the Shaker... <laughs> And he's pretty happy that he's going to have a free lane. Ember Spirit's, of course, very happy that he left the lane to the Shaker, got himself a double. And LG needs a uh, little bit more protection on this Gyrocopter if they really want to protect themselves from that. What they're going to do instead, though, is charge in towards Valix. He's not going to see this angle coming from the Spear Breaker. Fissure is going to connect. However, Queen of Pain is going to jump in. Shadow Strike right clicks. Easy kill on the Shaker. Again, it sucks that Milan can't get in range for Intelligence Steal. And stealing intelligence from a shaker is so so huge but hey it's a kill get a return kill from your uh, two that you lost they're gonna, they're gonna try to go up towards boogie on top lane Boogie has a couple of status stacks already working for him magic wand is pretty full as well they're gonna need an iron shell and spirit breaker and they will land it however they probably should go for okc and they will decide to go for that oh they get a lucky bash and a global silence vacuum back dazzle down Perfectly done by the NLG side. I didn't even see that silencer got level 6, and that's because he just barely got it. 8 experience in excess? Yeah. Uh, if you don't have that global silence, you probably still get the kill. It takes a lot, lot longer, though, because the Dazzle gets its grave off, gets a heal, and you have to dive tower, and it's a lot of pain. But they got the kill very cleanly. Now, global silence for a uh, Dazzle kill is not really the trade that NLG want to be making super frequently. You know, but a couple times, and especially in this early game phase when you just grab level 6, Probably not going to be much better than that. Again, it's unfortunate that Silencer can't steal heroes from those, like, assists. Because he deserves intelligence for that one, I think. 
Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Nempy. He's being charged now. Cannot escape Dyer's the cow. Is under actually, Ember Spirit can. Is only is the only hero that actually that can escape the cow. Especially with the level one charge, it's just so slow. And well, he'll cancel right before the sleight of fist. All planned from Spartan. Again, Stark, they just want to push out the map as much as possible, get themselves some farming room. They're going to see Milan down towards bottom. Gale's going to connect instantly. Milan's going to teleport out, jump in from the Ember Spirit. Chains are there. Silencer. He's going to lay the last word down to Nemphi, but it won't really do that much. In fact, it will do no damage at all because it's going to be absorbed by the Flame Guard. Another easy kill for the Ember as NLG's bottom lane fails to be protected again. The Gyrocopter is very far away. Is going to go for a lot of farm. Grab the range creep and he's going to be starting to stack those Ancients. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mod is getting pretty big, but at the same time, bottom lane tower is being pushed. Trixie, curiously enough, with no Ring of Basilius or anything like that. Usually a build that we see, a Ring of Kula at least. Oh, Excalibur over towards mid lane. He's going to blink out before the Scythe can come in. Unfortunately for Necrofox, that would have been a big kill. The Scythe would have definitely killed off the Queen of Pain. But not going to happen. Sparring can take a lot of poison damage. He's Nova, earned up. Gale and Poison Sting, he's just dead here. He needs someone to deny him. He's gonna turn around for another strike. A little bit of damage towards Trixie so that maybe someone else can get this kill, but the only hero that's coming in is Modra, and he's too far away anyway. Trixie gets fed a silver platter kill as he just catches the Spirit Breaker off guard for the damage over time. Now up towards top lane, Mitch is on the run. Surge away from the Ember Spirit. Although Ember Spirit going to land this Light of Fist, Searing Chains anyway, they have a Scythe, but Global Silence is going to deny that for right now, backing back into a wall. Mitch is going to avoid the Scythe for right now, as here comes Modra, Call Down is going to slow down Boogie a touch. And here comes Excalibur, he's going to blink right in towards Nemphi, Man Fight is there, Excalibur cannot win this Man Fight either. He's going to try to stick up, but he'll get swiped down by the Swords. Charge is coming in very slowly at that, Boogie still has Scythe, still looking for someone to Scythe down. Can't quite find a target just yet, they do see Nemphi, but they don't have any stuns to actually lock down this Ember Spirit. The only stuns that they do have, well, they're coming in slowly at that. On two, two, three heroes from Spartan has not another strike to use. And Grave is there. Okay, see ya, though. We'll get buzzed down by Modra's gun. Now they're on to Valix. Milan is going to steal at least some intelligence here from the Earthshaker. As they do also collapse into the Necropost. Searing Chains there from Nemphi. Is there another charge? Is there another Nether Strike? There's a charge here. Milan's got to be a little bit careful. He's going to stick up, keep himself alive. They get a lucky bash. And Mitch is ready to intercept Nemphi should he jump away. Nemphi, he's still just running, though. Spartan has another strike soon, and Nemphi is going to look to dodge that as best he can. Another strike or charge. Oh, chains will cancel one. Another strike was going to land a couple more right clicks. Milan's going to grab some int and the kill with the help of Spirit Breaker, of course. Great fight for the NLG side. Of course, the trade off is that Trixie wasn't in that fight. Now, grab his hand of Midas, also took down this bottom tier one. Not really the worst trade in the world for Stark, in all honesty, but still not a trade that they're going to be super eager to make. As I don't think they actually get any kills there. Milan collects uh, two stacks of int from that one. Not really sure on who. Uh, Ember Spirit, yes. Uh, I think that was also Shaker, I want to say. Not exactly 100% of that. He doesn't have a lot of intelligence right now, so I'm going to say Shaker. Yeah, for the Stark side, they really need the Venomancer damage over time there, because we saw how extended that fight was. Like, it started all the way over here, and it ended up, like, here, and freaking... Ah, Mouse. Here, like if you have a, a Nova in the midst of that NLG, though they do have a mech being built up on Mitch, they will uh, be taking a hell of a lot of unavoidable damage. We'd also like to see the pipe build up for uh, someone on the uh, NLG side. Most likely it's going to be the Darkseer. Very old build up. You get mech and pipe. Uh, not really seen that much anymore since Glimmer Cape is kind of taking place in pipe. But up against this magic damage to start, you really do need that item. Gale going to fly through. The charge is in onto Trixie. Sonic Wave. That's going to blow up the Venomancer. Global Silence also used. And yeah, the Ember Spirit does get to get away, but Trixie does not. Poor Veno. Spartan just kind of changed directions right into that Venomancer. They're going to find Mitch, however. Surge is there. His vacuum wall is going to try to straight TP out, but a Fissure is going to cancel that Mitch to fall. Charge is coming in from Spartan. Should not be committed to. Gonna get in really deep, however. Luckily for him, there's no fissure. He's gonna nether strike Valix, then try to run, but Searing Chain's gonna catch him off guard. Here comes the backup, however. Jump in. That's gonna be one kill on the Dazzle. Nice Echo Slam for Valix, though. Gonna immediately kill off that Spirit Breaker. Now gonna jump forward, looking for Milan's Scythe. Will get the kill. That Silencer down for a full minute, and Chihaya. Madra, he's trapped. Searing Chain will cancel his TP, and he'll die as well. Boogie's gonna draw a double, but at the same time, Excalibur, he's gonna grab a double as well. It's gonna be four heroes down, however, for the NLG side. Kind of filtering in one at a time. No Sonic Wave, no Global Silence. 
Pretty much NLG fighting at their absolute weakest. And Stark abusing that to its fullest. Boogie at full HP, got a Scythe kill, so a lot of downtime for the Silencer. Tier 1 now is in a little bit of trouble. Spirit Breaker. Gonna look to get a good angle for a charge, perhaps? I'm just gonna look to use his hand of Midas, that's about it. And Stark, they are showing uh, signs of life in this game. You can see the uh, damage now coming out from their heroes, at least in a semi substantial way. Of course, you know, getting an Echo Slam without a Blink Dagger not supposed to be something that Valox can e do easily. But if you can do it on two heroes like that we saw before, yeah, you're gonna be golden. Gyrocopter really needs uh, some sort of health item. Going for Yasha is nice, although I do think Sanj is probably the part that he wants to build up right now. There's no one on the NLG side, really super bulky, or at least building into bulk. Except for the Dark Star, I suppose, in the mechanism, but that's not even done yet. Charge is in onto Trixie. Nether Strike is there. Fissure's gonna be dodged by the Nether Strike. Still, Trixie hasn't used his ultimate just yet. Spartan is caught in a corner right now with only Excalibur to help him out. TP support is coming in from the Stark side. OKC is there. Spartan's gonna put up a pretty good fight. Much like his namesake, but uh, still, I mean, there was no escaping that. Radiant's top tower is under attack. It's like uh, Radiant did destroy a tower in the meantime, so trading away essentially the Spirit Breaker for a tower. Again, not a terrible trade for the NLG side. They have to be very careful about when they take those fights, however. In this game, NLG are actually surprisingly reliant on their ultimates, especially this Global Silence. That's really the only answer they have, a guaranteed answer they have to the Ember Spirit. I guess they will have this Orchid as well. But even if you Orchid the Ember Spirit as Queen of Pain, jump in for your burst combo. If he has a shield up, there's no guarantee that you actually get that kill. Oh, Global Silence is there. They're going to try to go for Nemphy. That's not going to happen in a million years unless Sonic Wave and Charge is there. Nemphy is still alive, however. Taking quite a bit of damage. Has a jump out. Is still charged and tracked up. And will be picked off by the Queen of Pain. Now the Charge is going to jump over towards Boogie. With Darkseer coming in from behind, NLG, do they actually want to go for this still? They're thinking about it. They're thinking about canceling. Oh, they're all in, baby. No. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, I thought Ember Spirit had a remnant to jump out to, but I thought I was just wrong about that. I assumed that he had a remnant to jump to, because why would you be in that position without a backup remnant? But unfortunately, not going to be the case. 14 to 11, and they get a pretty nice kill on the Ember Spirit. Who is on top of the Stark's net worth chart travels into Mance style. Again, never the build that you want to be going for, Mance style, but up against Global Silence, you have to. Uh, he has to be careful though. Global Silence and Orchid are there, so he has to he only has Mance Style to take off one. He cannot take off both. Unless NLG really mess up, in which I guess case like you I guess you can take off both. Wouldn't expect that to be a, a common occurrence. Our gyrocopter stacks. He has cleared out a couple. That's his Yasha. Ogre Club. Still getting quite a bit of farm, but we see the farm now being, uh, the gap is being lessened by Stark. <laughs> Look at this. This is crazy. Crazy even game. Venomancer, of course, with the Midas. He's going to be getting a lot of extra gold. And, of course, Ember Spirit Necrophos also uh, you know, doing decently in those fights. Got Yule Scepter and Rod of Atos and the Necrophos at least being built up. You will suffer another response item to the uh, global silence on the other end. Just cyclone yourself and get rid of that silence. Because that makes sense, Dota, that that works like that. Yeah, Stark are getting their defensive items up, at least enough to be comfortable. They also have Valix, who's not too far away from his Blink Dagger. Get the Blink Dagger on Shaker, get these uh, global silence responses from the Stark side. They will take a pretty decent team fight if NLG don't get their burst combo up properly, which is you know, Sonic Wave, Wall, Call Down. That could just nullify all those defensive tools from Stark. Definitely a little bit of a slower game here for both sides. Team fight execution is going to be so, so important. And in that, it really does, uh, at some degree, depend on Stark. And their ability to find the silencer, lock him down, and kill him off before Global Silence can fly. If they're able to do that, I don't see NLG winning a fight. Unless they're just like massively, massively ahead. And they're not right now, so yeah. They do need this Global Silence if they're going to win a fight. It's only level 1 right now. Doesn't seem like it's uh, going to change anytime soon either. Milan is kind of just awkwardly sticking around, although they do have a charge onto Valix. He's going to hit with the last word. He'll do a little bit of nuke damage. They have another strike, but they have to deal with Nemphy, who's going to charge right in, seeing two supports. Another strike, not going to be used just yet. Milan's going to straight TP out. He'll live. 
Spartan in the meantime looking for a little bit more blood. Another the charge, they can silence onto Valix right now. Excalibur Sonic Wave will kill off the Shaker. Charge also is incoming towards Nemphi. He's gonna dodge it. Spartan now in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna try to TP out himself. Mechanism for the high ground. Great play from the Darks here. Gonna keep his support safe. Excalibur now has a blink and he should be able to get away from Trixie. Blink away. Does still get hit with all the poison damage in the book. They still know exactly where he is now. Here comes the Necrophose. Scythe will not get the kill, especially with the silence in the boogie. And Excalibur will blink away, and he should live. Charge is coming back in from Spartan, however. So this time onto OKC. -a. With help here from the Gyrocopter right around the corner. Another strike is there, plus a lucky bash. They're going to force the grave out. Oh, Chaya, though, in a little bit of trouble. Global Science is going to be deployed with the Flat Cannon not yet turned on. They're taking so much damage regardless. That's Dazzle to fall. Vacuum back into the Nether Strike. That's going to be Trixie and Boogie also dead. Oh, baby. That's the combo. That is, in fact, the combo. Uh, this is not the play, but uh, that's the combo, at least. Land the Global Silence, vacuum them back into a call down. Actually, let Madra let loose with his guns. Up towards top lane, they're going to silence up Nemphi, who's coming in. That's the Gyrocopter. Not enough damage to kill off the Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, it is up to Stark to, again, kill off, or at least pressure the silencer. Get some form of crowd control effect on him. Or silencing or stunning effect. Shaker, it's your job to do that. Then fight without worrying about that global silence. If that's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. And, oh, well, he'll kill off the Spirit Breaker. My bad, guys. Seems like Spirit Breaker is growing tired of living. Decided to feed away his life to give the Earth Shaker a Blink Dagger. What a good guy. So, Valix's Blink Dagger now up. Gives Stark some sort of response, at least an, an attempt at uh, being able to canceling out that global silence. You know, Valix just jumps in, kills off Silencer first thing. Kind of miss the days of uh, Silencer having that last word aura. You'd blink in, Echo Slam as Shaker, and then you wouldn't be able to cast anything else for like three seconds. It sucks, man. <laughs> sucks. This this last word is much better, of course, but uh, yeah, Th those were the days. Those were the days. Got a smoke up from Stark now. Boogie's leading the charge. Of course, there's no one in the area. Queen of Pain, well, actually, they're, they're going to intercept Mitch. Blink away. There is a slight slow, but he's still surged up. Valix is going to blink forward. Echo Slam and Chain. Scythe is going to be deployed. That will get the kill. So Darkseer is dead for 80 seconds, but now here comes the response. Another strike onto Valix right now. Call down's available, and Valix is even going to hit with another uh, greater bash. He's going to try to teleport out of here. It looks like he may just make it, and he will. They're going to charge forward looking for something else. They're going to see Nemphi, but he's going to jump away. A couple of glaives, a couple of missiles, and everything like that. But Stark, for the most part, have made a clean retreat so far. Excalibur still has a haste rune. And they have a charge in Trixie, but they will decide to fall back. Again, no Darkster means no mech, no vacuum. Drastically weakens the team fight of the NLG. They still know the Venomancer as his ultimate. And Spartan is going to get slowed down and touched by Trixie's Poison Sting. Looking forward now for Milan. Stuck in the corner right now. No Slight of the Searing Chains. And don't exactly know where he went, I guess. We're going to see Spartan, though. I don't know if they just saw that he used his uh, charge to get out of there, although they will fail the chains. Now straight TP out. They don't have anything to cancel this, and he'll barely get away as well. It is Stark again, showing some signs of life as they're getting their defensive tools up. You can see they definitely do have enough kill power to kill off even the tanky heroes like Darkseer. And Ember Spirit isn't even going for a really damage-based build. Man style is... You know, it does give you some stats. But for the most part, it's a defensive item for the Ember. It's an offensive item for, like, Alchemist or Naga Siren or something like that. But for Ember, it's almost purely defense shields up. Still is anyone's game right now. Slight lead for NLG in both Golden Experience. And it is, of course, all down to that teamfight execution. Since both sides have so much AoE, have tools like Scythe and Poison Nova, which can make or break a fight. Even being like 10k ahead or behind doesn't really matter a ton for either end. Since one good or poor team fight can, you know, end up swinging the game. Cardi the catapult, the scouting tool, sees Boogie. Look at this catapult. What a warrior. It's actually not doing that much damage to these stupid play gourds. Where are you going anyway? This siege catapult has a mission. It's gonna be a scout. You've been demoted from attacker to ward. Feels bad, man. Ember Spirit has his man style now completed, so Queen of Pain's ability to get solo kills on him. Mm, pretty much impossible. 
Unless the Ember Spirit messes up. They need to use Global Silence if they really want to get that kill. Or have another strike in with the Spirit Breaker. Anything less than that, and Excalibur can't do it by himself. He can't kill off so a couple other heroes. Venomancer, perhaps. Dazzle for sure. Necrophos is getting you know, some pretty big items up. Blink Dagger. Couple Scepters. I guess this is technically a rod. I'm going to call it a Scepter. Scepter of Atos. Sounds pretty good. Madra's pretty big. However, his net worth kind of tied up into useless items right now. Because those items are not BKB. Now, here comes an Echo Slam. It's going to be used onto two heroes. Global Science is not there. Milan is chainsawed up. Excalibur will get Scythe. And Child falls shortly after. Now, the Yule Scepter onto the Silencer. Nice Global Silence, bro. Not going to do much for him. As the Dazzle's Heal Bomb is able to clean him off. NLG just not expecting that Blink Dagger from the Shaker. Although, I'm pretty sure I'm like 90% sure that they saw it. You don't clump up like that if you know there's an enemy Shaker on the other end. Just getting cleaned up by an Echo Slam. But perhaps more importantly than that Echo for the Earth Shaker, even though that was, you know, absolutely pinpoint perfect, was the Fissure afterwards. Because the Echo Slam connected them to two heroes. The Fissure was the one that actually locked down the Silencer. And if the Echo and the Fissure doesn't come out in time, Silencer is able to get his Global Silence off and actually, you know, let the Gyrocopter and Queen of Pain have a chance to escape. They'll pop BKBs, they'll blink out of there. Or, I mean, Gyrocopter won't, because he doesn't have BKB yet. But, you know, the options are definitely there for NLG to escape. They're going to try to contest Roshan, buying back with the Queen of Pain. The downside of this, of course, is that there is no Global Silence, so it's less for, it's less a Silencer fight, more so a Darkseer fight. But it seems like that buyback in and of itself is enough to keep the uh, Stark side a little bit scared. It will fall back out of that pit. It does cost Excalibur a hell of a lot, but he already has BKB and Orchid. Getting his next item, whatever that may be, is not super essential because he already has the bare minimum of items up. You get smoke up for the energy side. Not going to be spotted by any observer wards of the dire. Radiance top mm, there's not really any clear opportunities here. Although they are going to run kind of close to Trixie. Stark, they smell something. You don't want to just buy back and then do nothing with it. I guess it kind of makes a defense on Roshan, but not really. So for Excalibur and for NLG as a whole, they're really itching to get some sort of fight going. Otherwise, no point in Excalibur buying back, except for denying that Roshan, delaying it rather. You have to watch out though, Excalibur. He's going pretty deep by himself. Luckily for him, Stark are not in a position just yet to pounce. So now you have BKBs and the Gyrocopter and Queen of Pain. As long as they're not the ones to get hit with the initial Echo Slam initiation, some sort of response is going to be there. Call down with Global Silence, Sonic Wave. And a botched initiation there from Stark. The hell was that? <laughs> uh, uh, not the perfect initiation there from Stark may just end up in a disastrous fight for them. Especially the blink dagger on the darks here. Vacuum wall, global silence, sonic wave, call down. Oh man. Conversely for Stark, you know, blink echo slam, Nova, Reaper Scythe on one. Not quite as explosive, but can definitely get the job done. Seems like NLG kind of gearing up for another smoke. Smoke if you got him. Smokers are chokers. We flush your sin sticks down to hell. Smokes are going to wrap around each other. <laughs> All planned. Oh no, it's Milan though. The Earth, the silencer to get caught by the Earthshaker. He's not going to die just yet. Get this global silence off because also the Ember Spirit got caught. Vacuum back into a wall for three heroes. Calldown's going to completely miss. They're all into Balance right now. BKB up on this Galbra. We'll pick off the Shakers. They also see Trixie trying to retreat. Charge is going to kill on impact. And it seems like the Dazzle and Necros able to slip away. But man, I did not see the fact that they are actually collapsing onto the Ember Spirit over here. I mean, I was watching the poor, poor Silencer get Echo Slammed. Which is, again, prime objective number one for this dark side. The only problem is you have to kill off the Silencer if you initiate on him. It's not that hard to kill him off, honestly. He doesn't have that much health. But what he does have is enough time to pop a Global Silence. The three heroes dead on the dark side. NLG, they're going to go right into the Roche Pit. It's spotted out completely. It's not the fastest Roche in the world. But no response here possible from Stark. Your Necros is sure as hell not going to jump in. He's up on top lane. By the way, he's getting charged up on top lane. Madra now going to grab an Aegis. And they can probably take down this tier 1 tower down in the bottom lane as well. Dude, Spartan manning up. Now he's going to cancel it. Spartan has actually been very restrained about who he charges or how deep he charges in. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. See, 10 second BKB on Madra. Did not use it in that last fight, although uh, Excalibur did. Madra now getting chased down by Boogie. 
not much that he has to fear from this uh, Necropost and Tangle. Hell of a lot of damage, here comes the Ember Spirit, Excalibur, and it does not have his BKB just yet, he's gonna get Scythe, that's him down for 120 seconds, Jahaya gonna try to go 1v4, support is incoming, and he does have the Aegis, his BKB is now gonna fade, charge coming through onto Boogie, Nether Strike, not gonna land, he dies too quickly, Milan as well gonna fall, this is a double damage route on the Ember Spirit, he's gonna now try to race against Madra, however Madra's gonna kill off the Necropost, he's gonna get hit with the Fissure, and now he's chained down all alone, he's gonna fall, double double kills, but it's gonna be a 4 for 2 trade, as Nemphi's double damage rune kind of hiding there. I guess not 4 for 2, 5 for 2 if you count the Aegis. And NLG getting a little bit too antsy about that fight. Mitch over in the mid lane getting chased down by the Venomancer. So should be fine. Looks like Gale actually missed somehow. Although, no. Ace the Dirt Sacred not really wanting to go in. A double damage rune with that Ember Spirit, even with no quote unquote damage items, uh, actually works out really well for him. Going for that Dance Sounds D DD rune. DD uh, does not amplify green damage, it just amplifies stat based damage. So yeah, uh, getting a lot of extra damage with this build with the double damage rune. Of course, no global silence, only one BKB being up. Green Pain's gonna be down for another 50 seconds. Now, that buyback timer with the scythe is just so ridiculous. It is level 3 at this point. Yeah, Necrophos did go down himself, and now they're gonna go on to a Spartan. Echo Slam is in. Global silence, well, it's available for Milan, but he will not use it. That's a super dead Spirit Breaker. Valix has been not hesitating at all to go in for these Echo Slams. I think that is the correct decision to take out one hero of the fight, even though it may not be Milan every single time. You now have an opening to go for Milan. Here comes the jump in from the Ember Spirit. Global Silence again, not being used just yet. He's going to get chain stunned out of it. Shaker's going to have another kill in this bottom lane. NLG kind of falling apart right now. Stark are sticking to their game plan. Again, this is a mid to late game draft for them. And we're getting into that mid to late game phase. NLG, they still have a really big gyrocopter. We saw how long it took for Stark to actually kill this hero off. That being said, if they focus him down with a little bit more fervor, they'll be able to scythe him and take him out of the fight first thing. So yeah, it is still anyone's game. Zero net worth lead, zero experience. Everyone grab a coin, toss it. Heads is NLG, tails is Stark. It's about as close as it's going to get. I do think that Stark are playing perhaps a little bit better, especially in their uh, in their playstyle up against Milan. Silencer always wants to be near the fight to get ex to get his uh, damage off, but far enough away to not get hit with the global silence. Very delicate positioning from the silencer. Yeah, I think Stark are doing a well enough job to lock down that silencer at least as best they can. They're doing it pretty darn well. That being said, there's just so much brute force power here on Madra that uh, you know locking down the silencer is only going to help, not going to solve their team fight. And once another BKB comes up on Spartan, things are going to get a lot better. But similarly, got things going a lot worse for NLG. Magnum Scepter up on the Necrophos. A little bit more damage, making it a little bit easier to kill off that Gyrocopter perhaps. And of course denying that buyback. There we go. Oh, I didn't realize that it didn't decrease cooldown for level 1. Well, that's kind of weird. Either way, Trixie taking a lot of damage right now. Madra not going to fully commit just yet. Blink Sonic Wave. Mechanism will keep the Venomancer safe. Call down is there. They need to grave on Trixie's stat. Although he's going to blink out right beforehand. Spartan's going to dive in. Trying to go for it. You see it now. Here's the Global Silence. They were unable to cancel it out. Uh, over there, not taking that much damage. Vacuum back into another strike. Into a wall. That's Ember Spirit down first. Felix is in a little, a little bit of trouble. We'll take the grave, but the Dazzle will fall afterwards. Boogie unable to get any scythe targets out. Felix should fall to the damage over time. Boogie looking for a scythe kill on Chaya. Will not work out in time. Will almost kill off the Gyrocopter. Does get the kill in the end, but will lose his own life for it. Spartan going to teleport out in the tier threes. It's not going to happen. Excalibur also going to die to the poison damage of Trixie, the sole survivor of the Stark side. And for NLG, they teleport back with Mitch and Milan. An absolute bloodbath of a fight. Four for three. Trixie's the big winner of that one. Getting his Aghanim Scepter now completed. No pipe just yet, although Darkseer is building towards it. He needs that insight aura so desperately just to save a little bit of health on his allies. Queen of Pain going for an Assault Caress. Yeah, I mean, that's nice, I guess, but again, Stark has so much magic damage that you really do need to ju just try to bulk up in your health department. Even like an Octarine Core, I feel like. Even though uh, Excalibur may not want to go for that type of playstyle in Queen of Pain, just the Soul Booster in that, having some lifesteal. Those are the type of items that NLG really want. Uh, how Satanic on Gyrocopter will be absolutely huge if you can get it. Of course, you know, Satanic gameplay up against Necrophos is very delicate and not always going to be the best item, but you need your sustain up against Stark. Because if the fight lasts at all for a long time, 
They're going to outlast you. They're going to kill you off. Mon's global silence there was absolutely pinpoint perfect again, but uh, not quite in enough uh, follow-up. At least not enough to kill off the Venomancer and the Necrophos and the Ember Spirit. They just don't have enough damage for that. Trixie's gonna find Milan straight TP out from the Silencer. He'll live. Although take a lot of damage. Jesus. This Venomancer's damage output is no joke. 100 a pop isn't really that high for his right clicks. And of course factoring Poison Sting as well, but uh, this Nova really is where it's is where it's at. Thousand something damage. Trixie's gonna get jumped, however. They have a vacuum. Dazzle is here, however. Okay, see ya. Is here with the grave. Will weave up Trixie as well. They drop Orb of Venom for some reason. Grab Dust and now another strike on a Trixie who did get his ultimate off. So this is gonna be a lot of damage towards the NLG side as Trixie is gonna get beaten down eventually by Spartan. Should fall. BKB's on Excalibur will save him. Guardian Greaves gonna help mitigate that as well. Scythe kill will not happen because of that BKB. It's still sticking onwards. As Excalibur is able to blink out of there, charge now onto Boogie as Chahaya is gonna make his arrival. Global Silence is there. Vacuum back shortly after. Boogie is separated from the rest of his allies right now. Sonic Wave is gonna kill him off. Excalibur gonna survive. As an empty, he's going to get silenced up. There's an opening here for the NLG side. Not exactly the best fight after that global silence, because unfortunately the vacuum wall, as amazing as it was, had no follow-up. They had to choose. Do you go for the three heroes that got pulled back in the vacuum wall, or do you go for the Necrophos? And they chose Necrophos. If they can make something happen in the next uh, you know, minute or so in this game, then yeah, that will be the correct decision. But I think otherwise, letting Necrophos walk, killing off everyone else, would have been a little bit more preferable. Of course, hindsight 2020 and all that. Uh, Global Silence, though, was good enough, and Madra's arrival was timely. And also, Stark losing their Venomancer first thing, though he did get his ultimate off, unable to actually capitalize off of that ult. And Reaper Scythe, as nice as it is, is still magical damage. It says pierces spell immunity, but it uh, only the stun does that like lockdown portion. So yeah, unfortunately for the uh, Necrophos, just slightly missed time that on Excalibur. Who knows, getting that kill on the Queen of Pain probably would have saved him, just getting those Sadist stacks. It's a lot of extra regen, plus taking out the Queen of Pain, who down the line ended up killing him, so there's that. Again, hindsight 2020, but uh, you know, who knows what would have happened if he just was a little bit more patient, waiting for that Excalibur BKB to wear off. Although, you know, with BKB, even if you're immune when you cast the Scythe, if you're not immune when the Scythe actually lands, you'll still die. So I guess, you know, Necrophos was trying to look for that timing. Unfortunately for him, Excalibur only uses BKB a handful of times. And it's still at 7 seconds, which is perfectly respectable for Queen of Pain at 30, 40 minutes in. So it's a one fight for NLG, not super decisively. Global Silence cooldown, 20 seconds. Mitch is going to camp a double damage rune. Oh, I don't really think this is going to work out. Felix is going to grab it. Thanks for the double damage rune, bro. I think they wanted on the gyrocopter. He has a butterfly soon. Butterfly now, actually. He has to be very careful about his BKB usages, though. Again, BKB is going to block out this Venomancer's damage in its entirety. does not dispel it. So if you are hit with the Nova, then you BKB. You will still be technically Nova, though taking no damage. Which is very, very weird as a mechanic, but uh, you know who knows. Who are we to question the infinite wisdom of Ice Frog? Based Frogman. Where are you going, Spirit Breaker? Nowhere. He's going nowhere. So yeah, BKB timings, Global Silence timings, that's everything. Like, these items sure as hell aren't going to hurt. Like, Butterfly is pretty darn good. Assault Caress on Queen of Pain. Like, these are obviously good items to have, but uh, more importantly than these items are the timings. And perhaps for Ember Spirit, a little bit of luck. There's a 4,000 gold, I would expect. Ooh, no, a BKB actually is coming up on him. So he's really, really scared of the uh, CC effects from NLG. I was going to say I would expect the Chrysalis to get that baby crit going, get a little more damage. But it seems like he's comfortable just outlasting the NLG side in the fight. And I think that's fair enough. You don't have to burst heroes down to Stark. You just have to outlast them. Let the Venomancer do his job. Let the Necroposis Heartstopper aura and the Death Pulses start to stack up. And Ember Spirit just needs to stay elusive. He doesn't have to just jump in and one-shot everyone. Even though he would love to. That's uh, not exactly the goal of Stark's draft. Roshan, now going to be at least set up for Stark to try. They have Observer Wards in the area. They're setting up an entire hive of Plague Wards. However, this is going to put Trixie in a corner. Does have a Blink Dagger. He should not get popped here because you'll see everyone coming. Unless there's like a blind spell being thrown in. No, they'll see Milan. He'll Blink straight up to the north. Global Silence is still available right now. Spartan's going to pop his movement speed right now. Looking for a charge in. However, no BKBs up on him just yet. 
Fissure is gonna isolate Madra away, although that's not tight. He'll slip through there. Charge now back down from Spartan. It seems like they're gonna make a full retreat. Oh, Char uh, the chain's almost gonna connect onto Madra. Won't quite happen. Mid lane is pushing in towards the radiant side of the map, however, not in a substantial way. Here comes BKB. They're gonna lock down Spartan right now. BKB's pop everywhere. Global Silence is gonna be used, but Nephi's gonna dispel that immediately. With his Mantile, then jump out. Call down onto no one. Perfectly baited by the Stark side, of course. It doesn't really help that Spartan started that fight off at such a low amount of HP. Now that the Global Silence and BKBs were used on LG side, two of them, it's time for Stark to make a play. And this is gonna be a 50 second window until Queen of Pain's BKB is back up. Of course, they didn't. They use a BKB of their own on the Ember Spirit. That is a fresh 10 second BKB charge. So that bait is not without its cost. But it doesn't seem like they're really in a position where they're gonna be losing anything unless the Seder Banisher comes in, cancels the Blink Dagger. Look at this freaking hero of a little mini creep. He's gonna try to purge himself with a poison. Purge is such an inconsistent skill. You would think you'd be able to purge off anything that's on your status bar, but it doesn't work like that. Again, like, this is just how things work in Dota. I'm just questioning why does it work like this? I don't really know why. Should, I mean, balance reasons, I guess. You can make that excuse all the time. I feel like if it says, like, gets rid of negative debuffs, it should get rid of everything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's exceptions to the rule. Or there's so many exceptions that it's hard to even call it a rule. BKB's popped, Global Silence has popped. Yet Stark, not really with enough damage to go into that Roche Pit convincingly. They have a lot of sustain there. With the Dazzle and Necrophos especially, like they'll be able to eventually kill off Roshan. Just it'll take so, so long, give energy so many times, and oh, okay, Sia's in a little bit of trouble. We'll get Glimmered out of there. However, he's still charged in with a Dust Veil. It's going to change Sun Excalibur right now. BKB not up on the Queen of Pain just yet. Vacuum not going to do anything. Wall, same thing. Excalibur, though, will pop the BKB with the Guardian Greaves. We'll get away. Now, Boogie hit with another strike. We'll dodge the ultimate of the Queen of Pain with that Yule Scepter, but he's still going to fall without using his Scythe. Excalibur is going to teleport out of there. He should be just fine. Meantime, they're chasing down to the south towards Trixie. Charge is going to kick double iron shells there. Venomance are going to get ground down. In the meantime, Madra fighting up two versus one is so big. Doesn't really have much to fear. Silencer is not in lethal range, it seems. He'll live. Barrier, Insight Aura, the Guardian Greaves regeneration. Queen of Pain also narrowly edging an escape there. Three for nil in favor of NLG. Placement and timing, guys. Placement and timing. That's what it's all about. The Gyrocopters is so much bigger than the Ember Spirit, whose goal, of course, was to outlast. Therefore, cannot man fight the Gyrocopter, who has a very uh, different goal of kill everybody. I typically like the kill everybody plan. That's uh, that's how I like to play my Dota. Now we're gonna go right into the Roche Pit. Echo Slam is no longer available, though. Earthshaker, oh, he's gonna be spotted. He does see the Spirit Breaker come in with that gem. Spartan thinking about going for it, but really going in is suicide. He doesn't want to die right now. He just wants to secure this Aegis for his team, and Madra does grab it. And LG taking a pretty nice leap forward in net worth and experience. Uh, it's not gonna. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it in just a little bit when it actually updates a little bit more. There we go. That's the uptick that I was expecting. See, you just, you just gotta wait and be patient with the graphs, guys. Be patient with them and they'll show you love down the line. As nice as that is, again, with bad positioning, they could very easily end up losing a fight. So they gotta watch themselves. Locking down the Necrophos long enough, preventing him from getting a Scythe off. Of course, Scythe, even if it was casted, wouldn't have gotten any kills there. There were just no targets that were weak enough. Stark needs to open up with the Venomancer ultimate. Let that run its course for a little bit. You know, try to focus down the Queen of Pain, the Searing Chains, Echo Slam, whatnot. Then they can get their Scythe openings. But that just didn't happen in the last fight. And now Jowcopter is a double life. And a Satanic on the way. But yeah, Gyrocopter's pretty fat. Dude, so fat, he's gonna need a new copter. I guess his plane is called Gyrocopter, and he's named after his plane. So yeah, he's gonna need a new Gyrocopter. Or he's gonna have to expand it. Probably gonna have to pay for two tickets. Instead of just one. All the timings are up here for NLG. Got the Aegis, got the DKBs back up. Stark have everything as well, but uh, NLG have the Aegis, which is a decisive lead when these fights are being decided pretty much in a one-off fashion. You know, everyone launches their ultimates. Whoever places the ultimates better, whoever times it better, is going to win. And when you're in such an ultimate-based draft, having a double life is going to swing the game. And having uh, kind of a triple life for Satanic is also going to swing that fight very much so into NLG's favor. They'll start off by taking down, finally, a Tier 2 tower. First Tier 2 tower to fall on the Stark side. Now they're going to bust up the high ground. Definitely the hardest part of their game. 
Especially up against Trixie's Venomancer, who can start putting up that uh, wall of wards. Madra doesn't really give a damn here, however, because he does have that Aegis. If he's going to close in, but uh, no, they're just going to pop the Unholy Rage into Madra. Pop the Flat Cannon, do a little bit of damage to everyone, not enough damage to anyone. But Milan's in a perfect position in the back lines. Wait for that Global Silence, if needed. Jai will fall back, knowing that Satanic is not available just yet. Still, it's going to be possible for NLG to push as long as they don't lose the Silencer, as long as he's in this sideline position. Very hard for Stark to really see the Silencer, let alone jump on him, lock him down, and kill him off. They're going to barrier up. Now they're going to poke into this Tier 3. Tower down. Chai is the only one committed right now with the Aegis. You don't really want to jump in for the Echo Slam because it just won't do enough. Once again, Satanic going to keep them topped out. Now he's going to start working on these Raxes. Couple Plague Wards here. Valix going to jump in. Will miss his ton. Now here comes a charge in for Spartan. Might be a little premature, I think. He's going to cancel his charge. Another Strike will also be canceled. Call down is there, which will land into pretty much zero heroes. Madra's at half HP right now. Can be scythed down. Boogie knows there's an Aegis here on the Gyrocopter. No point going for that. Fissure is there. Chaya still dropping pretty low. We'll get sliced down. That's Aegis down. Now's the time for Stark to make a play. Blink Echo Slam still available. Or Echo Slam rather is available, but doesn't have a Blink Dagger. NLG, they walk in, take tier threes. Is that good enough for them? It should be. Of course, they may just be a little bit antsy, wanting to go into for a team fight still. Since this gyrocopter is still fat as hell. Stark though, they have successfully picked off the Aegis without committing any valuable tools whatsoever. So though they are feeling the pressure after having lost that tier three, they're feeling a lot better about this fight since now they can actually jump in, burst down Madra. It seems like NLG, they're not gonna go for it. Do they have a Glimmer Cape? They have a Pipe, which is good. They have a Shadow Blade, which is also good on the Spirit Breaker, but a Glimmer Cape to try to deal with Necrophos, or at least mitigate the effectiveness of Necrophos' Scythe. Might just be the difference here. Milan is going to get hit with the Vizier. He's going to get Yules up as well. Is he blocked in? He's taking a lot of damage right now. Scythe is going to be deployed, which will kill him off. Sounds are down for 90 with no buyback. Spartan. And he's going to Shadow Blade around, but that's about it. Nice little pick off on the retreat there for Stark. Still, they have lost in a matter of just a couple of minutes two towers in exchange for the Aegis and I guess the Silencer. This is not the time for NLG to push. Not exactly what you want to be doing with no Global Silence, no Aegis. Time to get a couple more items up, like an MKB or something like that for the Gyrocopter. Some more, uh, some more damage, so that means more lifesteal. Queen of Pain has grabbed a Sheep Stick. Stark, though. Mm, Blink Sheep Stick is a great way to initiate if they can actually find it. Do they see Spartan? They do with the gem. Spartan can pop a BKB right now. Here comes the backup. Call down this time. Is again onto zero heroes. It's got with the BKB pop. He's going to blink forward. Try to race Nemphi. He's not going to win this race. Even with the Guardian Greaves being deployed. Velix will Echo Slam. Will not work out very well for him though. Sonic Wave is going to cut through three heroes. Trixie dropping very low to Madra right now. But the damage up with the Gyrocopter is not high enough. And Venomancer DCs. That's why Trixie didn't use this Poison Nova. He had an opportunity to use it onto three heroes there. But here we go. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting. Gem of Tree Sight's on the deck, yes. No more real useful items on the... Or, cooldowns in the darks here. Where the hell is this missile? Oh, there it is. Okay. Hiding in the gyrocopter. Okay, we're going to try to get away from that because it sounds really loud. But Trixie is the only one who could actually die here, I feel. His own illusion may just do him in. Surge forward with a little bit of Iron Shell damage. Is there a Grave? There's not. There is a Glimmer in two seconds. Madra has no more Flat Cannon shots. Nor does he have a Flutter, so he can't get super close in and just pick him off with one shot. Scythe has already been used up in 10 seconds. I don't think this fight is going to last that long. Granted, the Queen of Pain is leaving. So she is 100% out of this fight. 2v4? 2v4 me, bro. I'll wreck you. Okay, this is way too loud. <laughs> I'll just I'll just wait over here until it unpauses. Okay, here we go. Trixie. Well, he's gonna get Guardian Grieved up. Looks like that was a cooldown I didn't see. Boogie. It's BKB is gonna round missile into Nemphi and everyone else from NLG is just gonna book it. Did they grab the gem? Seems like no, the Necrophos. No? Where is the gem? Did they grab the gem? Yes, they did grab the gem. <laughs> okay, Madra has the gem. You know, for NLG to take that fight, it wasn't actually all that bad, considering they didn't have the Global Silence there. Yeah, BKBs used and whatever, but uh, yeah, they lost the Spirit Breaker. But again, like, considering the fact that the Spirit Breaker was willing to get initiated upon with no Global Silence, a remarkable fight for NLG.
Queen of Pain really manning up, trying to pick off that Ember Spirit in a 1v1 duel. And Ember Spirit, though he hasn't gone for like full damage with the BKB and Mance style, he still is doing quite a bit. And Excalibur even has an Assault Caress, and uh, wasn't able to get the Sheep Stick, I don't think, on the Ember Spirit in time because of the BKB. Got another Sheep Stick now on Mitch. Double ble Blink Sheep Sticks, that's a way to initiate a fight. If you can, of course. Not exactly the easiest thing to do. Seems like we're in this for the long haul, guys. Better settle in. Luckily for me, I've been drinking coffee this entire time, so I still have a full cup of water. That's called planning ahead. This game is very delicate for both sides, though. If NLG loses like the Gyrocopter Queen of Pain to a Scythe, then that might just be you know, Tier 2s and Tier 3s, maybe a set of Raxes. Not game just yet. Stark similar enough. What's their buyback status looking like? Necrophos, yes. Venomancer, yes. Everyone else, no. And Ember Spirit, very far away from it, actually. And he's actually going to get wrapped around upon. He was spotted by a Radiant Observer. Does he have a Remnant in backup? He does. I'm not sure where that is, though. There it is. He's got to be very careful right now. Blink Sheepstick. It's impossible to react to. Oh, he's going to jump away, though. All he wanted was that sleight of fist from that creep wave. That's all he wanted. So he, that wasn't reaction time. That was what he was going to do anyway. It just so happened that it worked out very well for him. Because if he died right there with no buyback, the doors are wide open for NLG to take at least this top set of Raxes. At least. Probably a tier 2 in a side lane as well. Or a different lane as well. Are they really going to just straight push this? That's incredibly risky. She was guard up on the Necropos. There's no Aegis or anything like that. There's no reason to go for this. I mean, what what is the newest item that they got? Like a Sheepstick on the Dark Seer? That, that's good, but it's not going to be... Okay, now we can straight push high ground good. Need a little bit more. Need a little bit more. Mostly it's going to be this double life. Can I get a drum roll, please? Roshan, in three minutes. Okay, the game wants this game to extend so no Roshan for anybody you will not have a double life you will enjoy it tier 2 however that's something that Stark are a little bit less willing to defend though they can definitely do so blink echo slam scythe dead Madra again dead Rax is at that point for NLG so unnecessarily risky plays going for that one without some sort of backup plan silver edge up on the spirit breaker now at the very worst, man, you get the, you get the extra Sanj mixed in there. Get a little bit of uh, strength, get a little bit of bulk in the Spirit Breaker. So far, it's been fairly easy for Stark to lock down and kill off. And both sides are going to be revolving around this pit. And here we go, is where Split Pushing comes into play. And Envy, of course, has Travels. I don't think anyone else on Stark does. I hope no one's going to die while I'm checking these items. I could actually check all the items at the same time. If I was a good caster, I'd be doing that. Wait, did Darkseid just bail on his boots? No, Guardian Greaves. Okay, I was like, they're right there, but they're not in a line, even though they're in a line for Stark for some reason. I'm not really sure why that is. But either way, yeah, travel's going to be super important. Spamble Vision, like the Remnants of the Ember Spirit, also important. To charge in, getting a pick off would be even better. Oh, Trixie, he's gonna hit on the incoming right now. He's gonna get cheaped up in Netherstruck. Can they bring him down without him casting his ultimate? No, Grave is there. He should be able to at least cast his ultimate here, but the cooldown is also gonna land onto Nemphi. Global Silence is there. Trixie will fall. No ultimate used. Can they get anyone else on the chase, however? Chaya, thinking about going forward, but will consider better of it. That is Global Silence being used for a Venomancer. Charge forward into the Creep Wave. Seems like they just want to go for this tower. They still have to fear the Blink Echo Slam if they're not careful. Right now, Blink Echo Slam onto three. Jump in sight. Not going to be used just yet, but it will be used. Onto Chihaya won't do enough damage, so he's still going to survive. Ultimate does land. In the end, onto four heroes in the back line. Chihaya immediately going to teleport out of there. Damage over time. Not quite going to be high enough. He does get back to the fountain. In the meantime, Excalibur going to dive forward along with Mitch. Trying to go for a couple kills, but a huge slide of fist going to kill off that Queen of Pain. Boogie also going to survive because he got the two kills. With a double Sadist stacks from those kills, 20 charges. He can get right back up to one third of his HP pool. Queen of Pain did go down. The Gyrocopter did survive as he was able to teleport out of there. But Stark getting a big Echo Slam because NLG just get careless. I mean, they take down that Venomancer. Yeah, they do force him to buy back. That's kind of nice. But you group up for an Echo Slam like that and you're just asking for trouble. And granted, for NLG, things could have gotten a lot worse. Someone could have died there to the scythe, been out of commission for like 120 seconds. That did not happen. 
luckily for NLG. However, they still lose a whole lot of heroes in the wrong timing as well. The Stark take that win, and then Roshan spawns, and then a double damage rune spawns, because that's always how it is, isn't it? And grab an easy double life here, probably for Nemphi. Definitely here that you have to keep alive. NLG just getting a little bit careless, there's no two ways about it. Very, very delicate fight situation. And it cost them that double life, and therefore, with no Aegis available to them, uh, no high ground pushes available to the NLG side. Not sure if Stark are going to feel comfortable enough going for a high ground push of their own. They probably will be. Especially since, uh, well, at the very least, this tower is just going to die in like two hits. There we go. There we go. Free tower. NLG, they will be up in force, and their high ground defense is immense. Especially with this Dark Seer and the Queen of Pain. And, you know, double sheep sticks and with blinks. I'm not even sure who's in the lead right now. Seems like technically NLG, but we could see how much that actually mattered for them. Again, I'm just showing you these guys, these graphs, because I'm just curious. <laughs> it doesn't actually matter in this game, like, at all. Uh, BKBs and timings matter. And Satanic. That's a very important item for the Gyrocopter to use. Just get one hit with the heal before the Scythe comes in, and you'll be able to, uh, you know, maybe keep yourself safe from that. Modra's pretty fat, though. Well, I guess so is the Ember Spirit. Travels, BKB, Daedalus, another 6,500. Kind of an unnecessarily high amount of gold to be holding. You try to get, like, another uh, Chrysalis up. He can't buy that one. Can't quite buy a full Daedalus and have that one to replace the Aegis down the line. Uh, he may or may not want to go for a Scotty here for even more HP. Might be a little bit too much of a slow build from the Stark side. I'd just like to see a Veil of Discord on someone. Venomancer, ideally, has the uh, easiest time using it. Because Blink Echo Slam is not something you want to cancel out with the... Or, I guess, delay out with the Blink Veil Echo Slam. It's a little bit too slow. Probably Venomancer, but you amplify so many things on the Stark side. Yeah, you're going to be still running into that barrier, but uh, the price you pay originally. Charge coming in. It's onto Boogie right now. BKB popping the Spartan. Gets a lucky bash. Another strike is not going to be committed as he gets forced out of the high ground. Call down is there. Will not do that much damage. In fact, Scalper in the middle of everything. Global Silence now going to be deployed. Immediately manned out off as Trixie does unleash his ultimate. Only on two, however, the Gyrocopter. Excalibur going to blink out. Is really everyone going to live here? Are you kidding me? Oh, nope, nope, not the Spirit Breaker. He gets caught with the Scythe in the retreat. And now Chains. Nempy is going to catch two. Fissures there. Echo Slam as well. That's three heroes down in favor of Stark. With still the Aegis up. And the Queen of Pain does have a buyback. The Silencer does not. Jarcopter is going to have to have the defense of his life. He's going to hold this one because Stark, they're all alive and getting healthier by the second. Queen of Pain's going to buy out. Has another Sonic Wave. In fact, did not get a chance to use that in the last fight. Stark, though, they're just going to wait for a little while longer. Oh, Venomancer are going to blink in for a Gale. Gets Orchided for his troubles. Slide of Fist doing so much damage. This is a harassment tool. The stain from Stark really going to show its face again. The slow push in. Jaya is going to try to ward them away. Have a sheep stick on the Nemphi, but he has the Aegis, so losing him, not a big deal. Sonic Wave will be dodged by the Slide of Fist. Well done by Nemphi. Tower, taking a beating, will fall. Now the Raxes. Well, Radiant's Courier also gonna drop. The hell was on it. That was an MKB flying out for the Gyrocopter. Nemphi's gonna take a little bit of damage again, but it looks like with the Silencer coming back online, Stark may feel like they've had enough here. An MKB on Madra would have been huge. Instead, Stark, they're just going to have to uh, bring back the Ember Spirit in a minute or two. He has 9,000 gold. Over 9,000 gold. Holy crap, this dude is huge. Weave up, trying to go in again. Blink forward, vacuum, no wall just yet. Gets cancelled by the chains. Wall will be deployed, however, connects to absolutely no one. Now Mitch in a little bit of trouble. Has a Sheepstick still left to use. Excalibur is going to get chased down by this Nemphi. Ember Spirit will take out the Darkster before Sheepstick is deployed. And the wall will do absolutely jack all. Rax is now fully exposed. And will be brought down. In such a delicate game, one set of Raxes means very, very little. But it's still going to be quite a lot of uh, momentum here for Stark. As he's going to charge in looking for more. Scythe onto Maja right now. He's down for two minutes with no buyback. And I think that might just be game. As Nephi's going to go right on top of Excalibur. Going to try to race the Queen of Pain. Blink, Echo Slam. Queen of Pain's going to dodge. But Milan doesn't have that luxury. He'll get sliced down. As Shiva's guard is going to pop onto Boogie. As they might lose Valex on the retreat here. Another strike. Not going to happen just yet. He'll use it himself. He will be safe for a little while longer. Vigil to interrupt another strike one more time. Spirit Breaker didn't get his DKB off. Midrax is taken. Top lane. Also, Rax is in trouble. 
think Stark, after an hour long game, may have just broken the base, found their opening. After that one poor fight for NLG, this mid lane Echo Slam might have just turned the tables in Stark's favor. If you don't have that fight, NLG, they will probably still be kicking in this game. But instead, it's going to be top lane Raxes, completely destroyed. Still a minute and a half until Gyrocopter's back up. It looks like Stark, they're not going to leave this series without a fight, guys. They're going to slide right back down to the bottom lane. There's not really much that they have to fear. The Raxes, slowly but surely, are going to fall. Once Megas come in, then I'm pretty sure it's all over for NLG unless they take a really decisive fight right now. The Lineage Excalibur is not exactly a great way to do it. So let's get a BKB off, taking a lot of damage still. We'll blink out into the fountain. Sonic Wave will be deployed, not doing a ton of damage right now. Excalibur now chained down again. Scythe is going to kill off the Queen of Pain. 150 seconds down. Global Silence is used, but with no Jack up, no Queen of Pain, what sort of damage output do they have? They don't really have that much at all. They're going to be caroled back into their fountain. Spartan will barely survive. Limp into his fountain for a little bit of regen. Milan, though, doing so much damage over time. Look at this fountain regeneration, just barely keeping him afloat in this game. In the meantime, Darks here trying to play some games that have one in the back lines. Doesn't have any damage output, however. Okay, Seal's so just going to glimmer TP out of here. He's just fine. Nempty, he's back in with a salve even. Gonna do a little bit of damage here to the Raxes along with Trixie as everyone else is trying to get some kills. Because they know that this game might just be over. 20 seconds until the Gyrocopter is back up. If they lose the Darkseer here, that's just all it. And he is gonna fall. Milan also awkwardly on the low ground is gonna get jumped by the Emerspear. Blink it from Boogie. It's a double kill for Nemphi. And the only situation where NLG come back into this is with a all-in death push down mid. Of course, they lose Spartan. That's not exactly gonna help. Valix is gonna slip away as Nemphi swoops in and grabs a triple. Gyrocopter versus the world. He needs a Divine Rapier right now, but his courier ain't moving. I think we've done it, guys. I think Stark is actually going to bring this to a best of three, tying it up one to one. Jahaya is going to go out in a blaze of glory. Can he get any kills in said blaze? No. That was not exactly the most glorious blaze. And wow, what a scythe. That did so much damage. Holy shit. I did not expect that Scythe to kill, I'm gonna be honest, but it did. That is going to be it guys. One game apiece after an hour long game, seems like we're gonna have a small break as Milan's kinda asking for it. The next game is gonna be coming up soon, Stark, slowly but surely find their opening. Getting that Scythe kill, getting that Echo Slam over in that mid lane tier 2. That would have done it guys, that would have done it if NLG were able to avoid that, but it just got a little bit too antsy in an hour long game, you gotta keep your discipline up. 10,000 gold ending. Necrophos and Ember Spirit. After having purchased a Refresher Orb, are you kidding me? Yeah, that doesn't seem right. Either way, I'm Mike Loris. Been a pleasure casting these games for you guys. We got at least two more games coming up, so that's going to be pretty exciting. If you did enjoy it, be sure to stick around. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Loris. But for right now, we're going to go to short break as we're going to wait for Game 3 between NLG and Stark.